What's going on guys? This is going to be a pros and cons video of the all new Emulent DX80. Um, just, a, just a reminder again, especially to some guys, maybe they're hearing this for the first time if y'all haven't seen any of our other videos. But for the pros and cons videos, these are the completely subjective videos. So this is just my opinion. My opinion sucks even to myself. 50% uh, of the time. So feel free to disagree with me. Uh, in fact, I actually really enjoy reading the comments. A lot of um, the comments that I've read, people have actually uh, changed my opinion on certain things about lights because they've just made sense in the comments. So um, please feel free to leave comments if you disagree with anything that I say uh, in this video or any of the other videos, or even if you agree and you just want to leave one uh, just to be nice to me. <laughs> that, that would be really cool too. Um, but we'll jump right into it. Uh, knowing that it's completely subjective, these are just things that I like and things that I don't like about the light. Um, I'm going to start off with what might be a surprise to some people and maybe not so much, but I definitely have, I feel like, more cons than pros for this light. But I am going to start with the pros. Uh, the biggest pro, guys, is that whenever I find a light that has an advertised high level of lumens, and I feel, still think that anything 3000 and up for the most part, depending on the light type that it is, still qualifies for a high output light. Um, honestly, even my Claris X-T2 CR light qualifies as a, uh, for me, in that, in that form of a light, a high output light. Um, but I've noticed that a lot of the lights that I've owned and a lot of lights that I've tried, even the ones that have uh, supposedly very high outputs, I don't know what it is, maybe it's just my eyes, but it just doesn't really impress me that much. It doesn't seem like, I feel like I've had lights with less lumens that just deliver the power better and for that reason they, they seem brighter. Um, so the biggest pro about the all new DX80 uh, by Emilent is that I'm telling you guys this thing has to be a solid 32,000 lumens. There's no question about it. Um, we've compared it to the X80 which is the, the, you know, the previous king of lumen output and still impresses the crap out of me the X80 does by Ace Beam, but I'm telling you right now, just in terms of sheer output, as much as it pains me to say this, because I love the Ace Beam X80 so much, this light puts everything else, including the X80, to shame. This, in terms of just sheer output, excuse me, this thing's definitely, definitely uh, somewhere around 32,000 lumens, at least from its appearance. Um, also, there are certain things in the user interface that I actually really like about this light. This is the first Emilent product that I've ever owned. Um, I like the, the display on the light, and I know I've already shown you in a previous video, in the unboxing video, just how it looks, but I like that there's also a lockout mode on this light, for example. I think that for a light this size, and really for any light, it's, it's nice to have a way to lock the light out. Um, I also like the placement and the design of uh, the charging port here on the back. Uh, usually they're just little cheap rubber tabs on a lot of lights that easily come off. This one really digs into the light and it's even got a screw on it and I can't figure out what the screw's for on the bottom. I don't know if you're supposed to remove that and use that as a um, bipod stand. Perhaps that's what that is. But um, uh, I think it's a good feature. I really do. Um, to be honest, because you would expect 32,000 lumens just to be epically bright, and this certainly is, uh, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about the pros of the light. Um, we're going to jump into the cons now. Uh, first thing that I noticed when I held even the box of this light for the first time, and this maybe this is just because I'm more of a sissy than I think I am, but uh, this isn't something that I normally complain about. This light is heavy, man. I mean, crazy, crazy top heavy. Um, my Olight, uh, my... Uh, the SR95 SUT, like the thrower, is significantly taller, probably by four or five inches than this light. And it is a bit thinner, but it is so much, I don't know if just the balance is better, but it just feels in hand like it is so much lighter than the DX80 is. This is by far, by far the heaviest light I have ever, I have ever held, uh, LED light. That's without question, for me, in my experience. Um... I have had problems with this light, and I, and I hate to say this because I don't know, I don't know anything about Emilent. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but um, the light's brand new. Y'all saw the unboxing of the video for those who watched it. And guys, the charger, um, 
when you insert the charger into the light because it has a proprietary battery pack, the LED uh, battery, or not LED, I'm sorry, but the little display of the battery is supposed to display right here where you see your lumen outputs, your voltage, and all that other stuff. Um, the very first time I plugged it in, it did. And I got a little charge out of it. Then, for whatever reason, the light turned off. And I know that the light wasn't fully charged because it's only been plugged up for about 20 minutes. Um, I switched to three different outlets that had other things being powered by them. So I know the outlets work. And this thing didn't work anymore, um, which is huge for me. So I don't know. Maybe I got a dud. Maybe I did something wrong. I know with certainty it's not the outlets. Um, I also know because I tested, I was curious, well, maybe although the LED is not on or the little indicator is not on, maybe that means that... Um, it's maybe it's still charging for whatever reason um, but one thing is that when the indicator for charging was on on the light and the charger was plugged in um, it would not even allow me to access different modes or even turn the light on so now with it plugged in um, and without the display on and I mean I've done this maybe 50 times already just to make sure it's not me the light the light can come on and it's fully accessible into all of its modes so it's it's not charging it's definitely not charging also, excuse me, when it was charging, this charger got crazy hot in the wall. I mean, almost burn your fingers hot when I pulled it out. It really, really surprised me. I've, I've never felt that before. Maybe that's just a first time experience for me and some of you guys are used to that. But this, I, I've, I've never felt a wall charger get burning hot. And this thing, at least according to my standards, was crazy, crazy hot. I mean, I'm almost even thinking, I wonder if I burn it out and plugging it up into the light, but but I don't know. Um, the LED, the display on this light right here uh, that shows the outputs and stuff, it still works with no problems at all. The only display it will not show is the battery charging one, so maybe it's just a dud charger. Um, I'm not sure. Definitely disappointed in that. Uh, wish that hadn't happened. Hopefully an easy fix for the Inlet products. Um, another thing that for me is a big problem with this light, guys, is it's very thick. And when you mix how thick it is with how flush the button is, and y'all, if y'all saw my uh, Ace Beam EC50 Gen 2 video, then I had a very similar complaint. This is the most, uh, this is one of the most easily accidental turned on lights I've ever owned. Um, trying to get it in the hand right and keep it in position, not to mention just the hassle of finding the button. It is almost impossible to find this button. We had to turn on the light inside the car every single time just to find the one that said mode on. Typically, when you have a rubber tail, a rubber cap to protect your charging port, it's easy to access it uh, to, to know where the mode button is because it's directly on the opposite side of the rubber um, guard. But in this case, this light's so big, I don't think it serves the same purpose, to be honest. It certainly could, but my hands aren't the biggest, and for me, it doesn't. Not to the same degree that other lights do. Um, I don't know Immolent very well as a brand. Again, this is the first Immolent light that I've ever had. I'm very, very, very pleased with, uh, you know, with the beam. It is just phenomenal with the output of this light, 100%. But I do think they have some quality flaws, whether it comes to the charging or the, the charger itself. Um, the placement of the buttons is okay, but the buttons themselves are, it's, they're, they're not easily accessible. You can't, what I mean, perhaps I misspoke, you can't find them easily at all. Not at all. Um, and just how easy it is to actually turn the light on. Uh, I had my buddy Jeff hold the light and play with it, and just in the five minutes he held it, I think he accidentally turned it on three or four times. I also don't like the, the fact that when you step down from the 32,000 lumen mode, um, it takes you back down to either the previous mode or the 120 lumen mode. For me, that's just not, not a user interface that I'm accustomed to. I'm sure it's something you could, you know, get used to and become very fluent with. Um, for me, though, it just seems a bit awkward, and I wouldn't want to invest the amount of time into getting used to an interface like that. So, uh, ultimately, certainly there are pros and cons of this light. For me, I think that the cons outweigh the pros at this time. Um, although I think that, again, you know, the for those of you who just want to jump ahead in the Lumen race right now, in all seriousness, guys, this light, uh, I'm very confident, is going to please you in a way you never thought possible with lights up to this point in time. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Again, please feel free to comment. Uh, stay safe. God bless.